The peace of the Lord be with you, my dear family of God. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, year B. Some few days to the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Within this period, we reflect on the first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I would like us to reflect on the theme, the promise of God. In our daily lives, we sometimes receive promises from many individuals and sometimes institutions. We receive promise from our parents, we receive promise from our siblings, we receive promise from our colleagues and friends, we receive promise from our religious leaders, our prophets, our priests, our pastors, our evangelists, and the others. Sometimes too, we receive promise from our traditional leaders. Our political leaders are also not left out because they continue to make promises to their members. But the problem here is that they are not able to fulfill their promises. Few of the promises are being fulfilled and sometimes we lose hope in them. We begin to feel despair and we feel that that is the end of our life. Sometimes too, we become so disappointed that the one whom we hope that he will help us is not able to fulfill his promise. Today, my dear brother, my dear sister, I want to assure you that there is someone who will fulfill his promise, and that person is God. Because he is God, he will not break his promise. Because he is not a human being, he is not limited. He has everything at his back and call. So God will not break his promise because he is not limited. Secondly, he is eternal. He is eternal, so he will not break his promise. God's eternity surpasses whatever thing in our life. So he does not end. So his promises for us will not end. He will fulfill them in our lives. In the psalm of today, the second standard indicates to us that God has a covenantal relationship with us. Because of the covenant God has with us, he will not break his promise. He will not break that covenant that he has with us. We only have to be available to benefit from the covenantal promises he makes in our life. In the first reading of today, God makes some promises in our life. The first promise he makes is that he will give us rest. He will give us rest from our enemies. The enemy of sickness, the enemy of poverty, the enemy of violence in our lives, the enemy of afflictions and distractions in our lives. God says he will give us rest from them. God says he will give us rest from disappointment. He will give us rest from failures. He will give us rest from all kinds of enemies in our lives. We only have to be available so that God's rest will be ours. Again, he says he will make us great. He will make our name great. And I pray that through the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, may your name be great. May your name be seen everywhere. May God never forget you. Making us great is not only in prosperity, but he will let us prosper in his grace. He will let us prosper in his favors. So we have the favors of God. We have the protection of God. We have the guidance of God. So he will make us great. We should not be afraid in our lives. For the Lord has assured you and he has promised you, he will make you great. One wonderful thing about the promise of God that he continued to say is that his promise for you is not for you alone. It is for your generation. So God will prosper your generation. 
your offspring will benefit from the covenantal promises God makes to you today. Just trust in the Lord. In the Gospel of today, we see that the angel goes to a town in Galilee known as Nazareth. You see, Nazareth in Galilee was nothing to write home about. But that was where God decided that his covenantal promise will be fulfilled. When I started my seminar formation in my first year, a great man of God asked me this question. Can something great come out of Asokore in Kuforidia? I only smiled and replied, let us hope and pray, for God has a covenant with me. And truly, God has fulfilled his promise. He has fulfilled his covenantal promise he made to me and my father's and my mother's. This is the God whom we serve, the God who does not break his promise, the God who does not look at your statues, the God who does not look at where you come from, the village you come from, the town you come from, the city you come from. But because he has a covenantal relationship with you and your forefathers, he will fulfill his promise. What is the enemy in your life? God says he will give you rest. What have you fought so greatly that still is your enemy? God assures you today, he will free you from that enemy. We pray that God should continue to give our country peace after this election. Let us continue to protect ourselves against the spread of COVID-19. I wish you a fruitful and a blessed week. May God bless and keep all of us. Amen.